Hey guys, welcome back to Blender 3.3 New Hair Series Episode 2. Today we're going to cover the hair sculpting tools and how to mainly add hair. So let's get the intro out of the way and get started. Awesome. Now, in the last video, we gave you an overview of how to create hair. Now, I've just created an example head hair here, but let's hide this and let's create a, a new one. First of all, select this, press Shift A, go to the curve menu, empty hair, rename this new hair, and let's go into this menu, select sculpt mode, and we get access to all the sculpting tools and the first tool we're going to talk about is the add tool now the add tool is a pretty simple tool so let's start with this stroke the brush on the head you'll get a bunch of hair sticking out in a straight line which is cool but how do we control this now to control this tool we have a menu up here called uh, it's like a tool menu so it's the active tool menu now this menu gives you access to all the controls of this add tool and uh, to control this menu control this menu you have a couple of options you've got the radius and strength option you already know you can easily control this by pressing F uh, to control the radius and shift F to control the strength very easy but you also have some other new settings you have something called count interpolation there's a curve length and points per curve so let's explain what this is one by one let's start with the count now the count is very obvious very easy to understand I click once I get one hair click once again get one hair if I drag it just get one hair at a time that's the count increase this to five I now get five at a time in the brush radius if I reduce this we can also adjust the curve length, double the length. So I just click this. I'm not getting twice as long hair because I've increased the length. And there's also something called points per curve. And to understand this, I'm going to create a new curve to help you understand this. Okay, guys, here we have a curve and it has one, two, three, four, five points. If I was to right click and subdivide this, I'm just get adding more points. This is the points on the curve. If I was to drag it like this, you can see that there is a certain curvature happening. The more points we have on the curve, the more curvy we can make this object along this line. It's not possible to bend this object unless you select this point, this point, right click, subdivide and get a new point here. This is a problem when you call me here because you will have a limited number of points. Usually the standard is eight. When you start increasing the length significantly and you start trying to do really wild curls or very, very curvy shapes, you start to realize that the point count starts to become a limiting factor. Now increasing the point count decreases the performance, generally speaking. So that's why we have control over this. So we can decide whether we're going to increase the point count or keep it low as possible. So we can, for example, if I was to delete this, you'll see that we can't, we can't control the shape as much anymore. The best we can do is this, but before with more points, we can control quite a lot more. So let's get back to the hair example. Okay, so now that you understand point counts, we can increase the point count as we add. So if I wanted 16 or 20, 30 points for one this particular set only, I could do that. Uh, but eight is generally sufficient for most use cases. Now, the next control we have is the interpolation mode. In order to understand the interpolation mode, we need to do a few changes. Okay, we're back and I've just done a couple of changes here to this. I've given a couple of different example hair strands here just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. What I'm doing here is if I were to add hair like normal, you can see that I'm just adding these short hairs and that's just normal. But if I was to interpolate the length, you'll see that when I add hairs close to this area, it now adds hairs that are this kind of length. If I was to add here, it'll add hairs that are this kind of length. If I add hairs here, it'll add hairs that are about as long as this strand here. 
Let's undo that. Now, let's try to interpolate the shape, all right? If I was to interpolate this, it's just interpolating this curved shape. If I was to interpolate this one, it's going to interpolate this curved shape. If I was to interpolate, uh, or rather, if I was to add with interpolation this one, you can see that it's following this shape. That's what the shape interpolation does. And the point count, well, the point count really just mimics the point count of the similar uh, strands close by, and it'll kind of try to figure out what's the best point count between that. Now, if I were to put, uh, put all three, you'll see that as I move between these two, it will try to try to figure out how to how to transition from here to here or from here to here. So that's going to just figure out as we go. So let's try to dabble a little bit here, and you can see because of interpolation mode. I'm very very quickly able to get his hair to interpolate correctly well roughly correctly at least in this direction this is quite beneficial because I don't need to spend a lot of time you can very quickly adapt the style so what I did was I started by just putting a tiny piece here there's two or three hairs and just combed it the way I want and then we interpolate an ad and this really speeds up the workflow of creating a specific set of hair and then you can comb later and get the shape correctly this is a very very powerful tool and there's one last thing i want to show you with the add tool and that is the symmetry options now the symmetry options allow you to symmetrize your hair uh, the, the effect of the tool across the axes if i were to symmetrize with so you can symmetrize with this option here and there's different options to mirror across the x-axis the y-axis and the z-axis and if i was to symmetrize against the x-axis you can see here that we create this kind of effect i would advise you to make sure that the rotations of the model are applied and your model is properly rotated across the x-axis otherwise this won't work so the further away i go sometimes it won't register you see this this is because the head is tilted and not not properly symmetrized but if if you have a symmetrical object this would be easy okay i would recommend you don't use symmetry if you don't have a symmetrical character so that's all there is to know about the add tool in the next episode we're going to cover the other tool which is the next tool which is the uh, delete tool but it, the delete tool is pretty simple so we'll probably also cover uh, the density tool as well thank you for watching and i hope to catch you in the next one